One of the classic things that people do when getting started working with GIS is to make some maps of states and counties of the U.S. looking just at population data. It's a good starting place because people are familiar with states and counties and there's a lot of population data available that is the same kind of data everywhere. So we're going to make some maps. We're going to look first at the table of information that is available and you'll see a set of fields, characteristics, attributes they're called in GIS, about the states. And the same kinds of data are available about the counties and the census tracts and the zip codes. And we can make maps on this. Let's just very quickly go in and classify the data according to a quantity. Let's use population in 2010. Let's go ahead and accept the values that are uh, the defaults. And we've got a map. And the states that pop out, California, Texas, Florida, New York, the ones that are the, ones that are the uh, most populous ones, as we know. But there are lots of ways that you can map things. And this is where it's important for students to learn about the classification schemes and maps as interpretations. We've used a scheme that is a natural break scheme. We could go in and change the methodology. We could choose a, an equal interval. And we've got a nice, neat stair step break. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Same data and now much less colorful. We could go in and do something that is, let's try it with a quantile. We now have an equal number within each class. Go ahead and map it. We now have a much more colorful map. Same data, different classification scheme. Students need to be comfortable with maps as communication devices. The map is a way that somebody has looked at a set of data and come up with a way to present it. Let's do this with counties. Wow, there are a lot of counties. Well, let's move the states up on top so that we can see. Well, now we can't see through the states, so let's make it so that we can see. Let's have it be a single feature that is hollow, that has a nice border so that we can see the counties that we're looking at. And let's play with the county data and come in and understand, okay, we can look at the same kinds of information. Let's do population again. And so there are some counties that kind of blow the curve because there's some very populous counties that you get to see. Well, what about if we take a look at these in a different way? What if we said instead of just the total number of people, what about population change? We can divide the number of people in 2010 by the number of people in 2000. Now we've got a ratio that we're creating that is looking at pop growth. And if it's less than one, that means it's going to be a decline from 2000 to 2010. If it's more than one, it's going to be a growth from 2000 to 2010. So let's use a color scheme. It is a little bit of a, a change here. Let's go between red to green and let's change the colors so that red is a decline and green is a growth. Go ahead and click OK. And we can see the areas that are declining and the areas that are growing. Or, if you're really working with people who are very strong on their math and they're playing with statistics and they understand uh, standard deviation, let's go ahead and choose standard deviation as a mechanism here. Now you can see this in terms of a very popular statistical device and it automatically chooses a standard deviation color scheme that makes sense and now you can see this in a way that uh, statisticians would be interested in looking at this. 
we can also go in and take a look and see what the what we find here I can see the Atlanta neighborhood I can see the Las Vegas area I can see the Great Plains losing population I see the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex all these pieces of geography that stand out and the math stands out as you're working your way through it so GIS is a powerful technology for covering all kinds of subjects